YouTube, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles. And Curtis with Olympus Reptiles. And you're watching the Olympus Reptiles News. I watched Viper Keeper this week. You know what Are he was talking about? The... Oh, we do need to mention that. First, before we mention what's in the Cobra Basket, what did we name the last snake? Um, Icarus. Icarus. It's the GHI male is named Icarus. Let me show you what's in our Cobra Basket. Is it going to be a Cobra? Wah! No, it's actually going to be a really nice, high-contrast albino, but you probably already knew that from her thumbnail. But she is beautiful, and she does need a name. She's one of our own productions. Remember, you have to go with a name with mythology. I don't care what mythology it's from, but it has to be mythology. It can't be one we've used. And we're going to pick something, just like we did from the last video, something that suits her. So a nice, high-contrast, yellow and white albino with one weird little freckle. So whatever you can think of, please let us know and we'll use one of your names for this girl here. I also watch Viper Keeper, Kurt. You watch him very often? Now and then. Now and then. Well, today he was showing us how to incubate Taipan eggs. I've never incubated Taipan eggs. That's something that's kind of above, above my skill level. But he also talked about tips on how to run a restaurant. A restaurant? Yeah, I didn't know he was into that, but he gives some tips on running a restaurant. You should really check that out. Do they serve reptile eggs there? Uh, not typically, I don't think, but it's, it's an interesting advice. You know, put salads and sauces in and, and store them uh, uh, in the fridge at the restaurant until you've created enough uh, uh, E. coli so you can kill the people that come to your restaurant. I don't know. I'm just saying. Uh, just joking there. Well, you know, on uh, YouTube reptile channels, there's quite a few Brian's. There's a lot of them. Yeah, well, a couple of them got together, Brian Cusco and Brian Gundy, and they did a video on showing some of uh, Gundy's collection on the um, Triple B TV. Oh, was it confusing with all those Brian's? A little bit. You couldn't tell which one was which. <laughs> How's it going, guys? Brian Cusco here at Triple B, here with Mr. <laughs> Brian Gundy of For Goodness Snakes. We are here in his snake room. We're going to take a look at some of the awesome ball pythons that he's working with. I also watched TNT Reptiles, and he did something really cool. He came up with the first aid kit for his ball pythons. Kind of having everything on hand, everything together that you might need to treat an animal if it had a, you know, a minor problem like a scratch or a cut or maybe a, a start of a respiratory infection. So he had it all right there where you knew what to find and knew what it was all for. Pretty neat video to watch. Alright guys, this is Snake First Aid Kit. I, TNT balls use a lot. Well, I was watching Snake Dad, and he does a lot of stuff on reptiles. Um, he's Mexican, but he also keeps Mexican black snakes. Oh, well, so as long as it's Mexican black snakes, I guess that's okay. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, Mexican that keeps, you know, Mexican black, black snakes. Types of king snakes out there. I just in particular really like this uh, Mexican black. These are really, really bad. And I mean... Mexican, having a Mexican, of course, you know, why not? <laughs> and since we probably just, I don't know, offended a ton of people, we might as well keep talking about foreigners and talk about Gavin from Balls to You. Because, you know, Gavin, he's across the pond, right? Yep. And he did a video talking about a lot of the new laws that are coming out over there and how IHS is going to handle it and how they're identifying hobby breeders versus businesses and all of these things and putting some of the fears that people have to rest. So if you're across the pond, I really strongly suggest you go watch Gavin's video. Not to mention the dude, like, he like completely hulks out in the thing. Like he shows off the guns and like, dude's jacked. Hey. Gavin, dude, you're jacked. He turns green? Almost. Like Almost. it's like, whoa, like I was, I was a little bit afraid. I'm not going to lie. I know it's a little bit tight, but shows the guns really well. <laughs> Sorry, God, I'm only joking. Uh, dude, that thing. Dude, that thing. Yeah, dude, that thing. You should check out Brian Koblika's, uh video on insane clowns, and there are some really insane clowns. Does he have a posse of them? Uh, there's three, I think. Does, that make a, does three make an insane clown posse? Comment below and let us know. Does Justin Koblika have an entire ICP? I'm curious. Dude, that thing. How are these odds even possible? And this one has a really interesting, nice tight pattern here at the top, black, and then the red popping through. Speaking of insane clowns, 
I watch somebody who does some insane stuff. It's not clowns, though, it's retics. And that's Prehistoric Pets. Congratulations, Prehistoric Pets, for getting to 500,000 subs. And he's going to show you a lot of uh, reticulated pythons in the egg. And you know, typical how Prehistoric Pets does out of the egg, too. <laughs> pied albino, but he was a tiger pied albino. And so what we have are sunfire tigers. We're going to end sunfire super tigers. Mochino, there's a super tiger head albino right there. Sunfire super tiger head albino. Well, can um, ball pythons eat chickens? I've never once tried to feed my ball python a chicken. But have you ever fed a chicken to a ball or a snake? Uh, yes, actually, I have. I have fed a chicken to a snake. Well, the genetic hunters, they go on their video, they have a couple snakes that are a little bit finicky on eating, and they go and get some chicks, the little baby chickens, to uh, feed some of their snakes. Did it work? Um, I don't know, because um, YouTube doesn't like to do like live feeding. Oh, what, they don't? No, no, no yeah, they, they don't. YouTube, really? <laughs> so they just kind of set them in there, and then we just have to guess if they've ate them or not. It happens. Yeah. I have done that with boas before, way back in the day, back in my early days. And because they've been having some trouble eating, we're going to go ahead and uh, give them a different option. Get over here, baby. All right, so here we go. Sit in there, buddy. All right. Enjoy, brother. I also watched another Brian. I think he's a Brian you mentioned before about all the Brians. Yes, so we're Brian's. Talking about yeah, Brian. Brian's. And since you watched the two Brian's together, I watched one of those Brian's when he was separate. And that was Brian Gundy. And Brian Gundy shows one of his favorite all-time snakes. And it's really cool because it's a double recessive. It is actually a clown pie. So it's two recessive genes. You've got to get to the same snake. And this is a 10-year project. And he also kind of just has that calming voice when I watch his videos. I almost feel like I'm watching Bob Ross painting art back in the day with the little trees. Well, he is painting art with snakes. It is art with snakes, absolutely. But he doesn't have the, the throw. <laughs> but as you can see, she is amazing. Look at the color coming in. Now, this is a yellow striped pine clown. Have you ever also seen Reach Out Reptiles? I think it's Reach Out Reptiles. Yes. Yeah, I watched Reach Out Reptiles recently, and uh, he was given some a really good video on good tips on how to get your snake to eat if it's finicky, and a lot of different things that could cause a ball python not to eat, and some of the things that you could do to help that. And so, you know, reach around. I'm, whoa, whoa, what, what, did I say that wrong? Right, not reach around, reach out. Reach Out reach Reptiles, out. great video. Reach, reach out, reach out, not, not the other thing. Forty and slip, not reach around. Definitely reach out. My name is Derek Hartle. This is Reach Out Reptiles, and in today's video, we're going to talk about how come I have good food, but my snake won't eat. Well, um, on a exo or ectothermic, I think I said I think I said that right. Ectothermic dungeon. Um, they kind of remind me of you. Their name is Jim and Matt. And the bat on there doesn't like to speak on camera that much. Oh, so it's like the complete opposite of us? Yeah. Is the mat on there like shorter than the gym? Yes. <laughs> that works out perfect. <laughs> but check them out. They're, they're a pretty cool channel. I'm going to have to now. The bloopers. I know you're short and all, but you can't hide from the camera. <laughs> what the heck am I going to talk about? Well, we're doing a video. What's the video about? I mean, you were here for the whole shooting of the video. True. You know who else I watched was Tim Lotman. And I got to take a second to give a quick shout out to Tim. He's been a longtime supporter of ours, both here and on Patreon. And Tim just got to clutch, cut his first clutch of eggs. And I know personally how exciting that moment can be. So I just wanted to give him a shout out and wish those eggs the best. Were they healthy? They were all healthy. That's good. Absolutely. The pairing was um, a bumblebee female to... Um, a pied, um, <laughs> um, pied male. Got a head poking up. That was the first baby right there. And I think it is a, either a normal or a spider, maybe. Any more from you? Nope, that's all I have. I got one more. Okay. One more, and that is I watched Herper's TV, Dave Kaufman's vlogs. Uh, that, Anything by Dave Kaufman. Just put in Dave Kaufman, Herpers TV. You'll get them all to come up because that guy is everywhere. But in this episode, he was actually hanging out with another person that I really admire, and that's Tom Crutchfield. 
And as many of you know, you know, Tom Crutchfield, he took a really bad, I mean, it was a bad bite from a croc monitor and it kind of mangled his hand up and he's just starting to heal up and he's kind of wondering how much use of the finger he's actually going to have. But in this video, he, you know, Dave will go back and he'll show you the actual pictures of the hand and you can see how bad the damage was. And for some reason after watching it, I was just craving chips and salsa. So go watch that and let me know, did you crave chips and salsa when you watched that video? All right, Rattler, so if you're squeamish, you might want to look away, but these are the pictures Tom sent me the day of the bite. This is what his hand looks like from just a warning bite from these croc monitors. <laughs> So is that all we got for the news today, Kurt? That's all the news. That's all the news. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment below if you crave chips and salsa. Help us name that snake, and we'll see you guys again next week. Please, please, please stick around for the interview because we just mentioned Dave Kaufman, right? Dave Kaufman is our interview. It'll be on a separate video. We didn't want to make these too long. I think that's one of the complaints people have. I'm trying to shorten them up and give you two separate videos, but make sure and watch that because getting to talk to Dave was a highlight for me, something I've wanted to do for a very long time, and it is awesome. So please stick around and watch that on our next video, getting uploaded at the same time as this one. Anything else you want to add, Kurt? No. Nope. All right, guys, we will see you next week.